Alrighty, we got another three on three, another challenge here. We got myself, Tom Martell, and Macklemore battling against the Austrians, the Smasher, Forbin, <laughs> uh, Fearbina, and uh, Max Capone here. I'm passing to Max, and I'm going to take Mox Sapphire. I believe he's going to take Fiery Confluence, and Mac is probably. Uh, I don't love that Mac might take Chandra, but I hope he takes Luminarc Aspirant after that. Also a potential Counterspell, it kind of depends on what they open. Also possible that uh, Max takes Counterspell here and passes the red cards, but either way I expect Counterspell, Fiery Confluence, Luminarc, Chandra, and Currency Converter to be taken, which means I'm not getting anything particularly special back, but I open on Mox Sapphire, it's definitely not unhappy about that. Second pick, hmm, I could just take Necromancy here. Don't really want to take Narset. Rafine is interesting because no, I'm not going to take Rafine, but it's more like looking at Rafine and thinking this will wheel because I think Necromancy, Plateau, Moloch, maybe Inspector, Bankbuster, or Narset are like the cards that I think are going to get taken. So there's a chance I get Rafine back. I got to take Necromancy here. It's just the strongest card. So this sets up Max to either take Moloch or Plateau if he took Fiery Confluence, maybe Thraven. If he took Counterspell, he might take Narset or Bankbuster, and maybe Mac gets the Plateau or, or Thraven Inspector, something like that. Okay. And then third pick, oh, there's a DAC. I like DAC. I do like Shelldoc a lot as well. There's also Tishana's Tidebinder, which is fine, but... I'm thinking I might just either Dak or Sheldock here, and hmm, not sure which one. Dak is good with Necromancy, but Sheldock can be too. Cutting red could be good, but I've been I've been really impressed with Sheldock. It just frequently gives you such good value. I might just take that past the Dak. Except I do like Dak and Necromancy, and there's not much else here that I'm too concerned with. Let's let's go with Dak. It's pretty close, but I think I want Dak Vaden there. Okay. There's Underground Sea here. There's also Coveted Jewel in Mishra's Workshop. I do love Mishra's Workshop now. I feel like Mishra's Workshop is a super strong card. I'm considering just taking the Workshop and trying to wheel Coveted Jewel, because then Underground Sea, Huatli... Mastermind, Council's Judgment, get taken, maybe Firebolt as well. And I think Coveted Jewel comes back. Hmm. Also, Tom probably knows that I took the Workshop. It's one of the reasons I love having Tom on our team is we talk a lot about these picks and he knows I like Workshop a lot. All right, I'm going to go with the Workshop here. I'm going to see how this turns out. I'll probably still take Toxic Deluge here either way. Passing on Dothy Voidwalker, Arc Trail, and some green cards and white cards. All right, well, I do like I do like Deluge in this sort of deck. Coveted Jewel into Toxic Deluge. Pretty good little little sequence. If Coveted Jewel doesn't come back, I'll be a little unhappy, but, you know, I, I'm willing to take that risk. I just think Mish's Workshop, now that we've added Sakarian Infiltrator, there's a Royal Warden that might come back. That's the three black black, three two that makes two two twos. Uh, Chaos Defiler, uh, Necrom Deathmark. There's just a lot of good expensive artifacts now. Mm. Speaking of which, Bolus of Citadel, Echo of Eons, Trinket Mage. Wow, this is a pretty good pack. There's also Gristlebrand. I could just take Gristlebrand for this Necromancy. Wish I took uh, Underground Sea, but I have the option of Gristlebrand here over Grist, and then maybe some combination of Echo, Trinket Mage, Bolus of Citadel probably come back. All right, I'll take the Gristlebrand. Chandra did come back. I could just take Chandra now. I could also, you know, ignore this workshop and be red black maybe splash Dak Faden. Okay, I think I'll do that. I think Chandra is the best card here. We'll see what comes back around. I am regretting the Underground Sea workshop pick, but yeah, it's not the end of the world. We'll see what uh what else I get past here. Rafine of course did come back around. So did Bayou. I could also take this might be a time to take Blood Fountain as a discard outlet and over Bayou and Rafine and Thraven Inspector. Yeah, I think so. I think that's that's more we're going. I mean, we got a late gristle brand, so and and then a, a deluge, so or a deluge then a gristle brand, so and the Chandra wield, so that definitely changes the direction that I want to go here. 
Oh, Royal Warden did come back as well. So five mana, three, two, and makes two uh, Necron 2-2 two, two artifact creatures. So I, I will take that. I could still also be a workshop deck is funny. the funny thing. I like this more than uh, Mana Confluence, I think. I'm not I'm not a huge Mana Confluence fan. And this is a fine... Royal Warden's a fine card to reanimate, fine card to cast. It's just... It's got decent outs to, to be good here. And... Let's, let's let's keep the workshop here. Coveted Jewel, Batter Skull, and Talisman came back. So I will take the Coveted Jewel now. I think that that's a fine place to speculate. Oh, these are all threes. Why, why do I think Dak and Toxic Dealers cost different amounts? Who knows? Okay. I mean, I haven't done Workshop Reanimator before, but uh, this actually doesn't seem like too crazy of a plan. And then here, I'll just hate the Beseju and pass... All the green and white cards. I think Besage is the best card. I'm still pat and it's good against me specifically. And I'm still passing. Like I can't stop passing white cards here. But I don't think Max is that likely to be drafting white. I'm really hoping Mac is the one with the Luminarch Aspirant. And then Bolsa, Citadel, and Lazav came back. But Citadel is kind of interesting with Workshop. I don't think that's crazy. And I don't think I want Zuranorb though. Zuranorb Bolsa Citadel is actually like kind of a nice combination. And then there's Sinkhole here and Overgrown Tomb. Um, I think I'd rather just take Overgrown Tomb. You never know. And then here, I suppose I'll take... I'm not going to play either of these. I guess Rafine is le less likely to, to get put into Max's deck. All right. Interesting pack one. Let's see what we open pack two here. I mean, we're in a position like Blood Fountain Artifact. We could take Tinker if we opened it. Obviously, uh, Academy would actually be pretty interesting here, too. I actually don't mind where we're at. Maybe the Underground Sea pick didn't work out so badly. All right, well, there's Grief. I think I'll just have to take that. I When you have Necromancy already, Grief is pretty good. It's good to cast. I think I want that more than Verdant. Passing Inquisition, Fire Covenant, Lorien Revealed. Didn't get past almost any blue cards, so... I think Fearbina here is probably playing blue, but I don't care about passing a Lorien Revealed, Fire Covenant, Verdant. So actually those three cards plus Inquisition and a Braid are like the five best cards, but those skew really heavily red-black. So it's possible someone takes like a Scholar. If someone has a Stoneforge, maybe they take Cauldra, but I'm just going to take a Grief here. I don't really have a better option, I don't think. Ah, this is a weak pack. I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunate. Here, there, there is a Faithless Looting, Gix's Command, Recurring Nightmare, Brainstorm, Pirate Spell One, Black Cleave Cliffs. Like, there's a bunch of cards I could take, but none of these are second pick quality cards. I hope Max didn't open a piece of power here, because th this is just such a weak pack. I think I will take the Faithless Looting, though. This looks like a pretty good looting deck, and if I get Recurring Nightmare back, I guess I'll be pretty happy. But I think the looting's a little more important. And then here, ooh, I like Triarch Praetorian. So two mana, two, and flying when you unearth it, which has unearth five, you draw two, lose two. And if you reanimate it, you draw two, lose two. There's also Trumpet and Carnosaur. I would love an Urborg to go with this workshop. There's also Undercity Sewers, which is a pretty nice nice one. I think it's possible that the Triarch Praetorian will wheel. But even if that's the case, do I not want to take Triplicate Titan? Or, uh, sorry, do I want to take Triplicate Titan over it? I don't even know about that. Carnosaur it just seems okay. How many cards do I want out of this pack, and how do I want? How do I get them? I guess I wouldn't mind Talisman. Maybe I take Undercity Sewers and Talisman, but I kind of do like the Praetorian. I think, I think I'll take the Talisman here. I don't know. That's 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 kind of a close pack. There's just a lot of like medium cards I wanted. Oh, Unmarked Grave. I don't have a non-legendary target though. Putting Royal Warden in the graveyard is not for me. I think I'll take Jace here. I just took a blue black Talisman. Jay seems castable, and I don't really want to pass Anton and Jace here. I don't know that I'm heavy red either. All I know is I'm playing black, and it will be playing some combination of blue and red cards, but I don't know uh, exactly which ones. Also, I'm getting to the point where I have more discard outlets than I do uh, reanimates by a lot, so I don't like that. Oh, him to Turok is pretty great. Ponder is good too, but this is looking like him, and then I don't think Ponder is going to come back, but Dark Slick Shores might. I think uh, Ponder, one of the white cards, Flame Slash gets taken. Gita, maybe City Traders, maybe Godless Shrine, but happy enough taking him. 
This pack's also pretty weak. I guess I could just take Virtue. It's good against aggro decks. Don't think I need a red-white land. It feels like black might be getting a little more cut, though. Oh, Fire Covenant Wield? Okay, we'll take it. I mean, maybe I get that Bray's Apprentice back, too. All right, well, maybe black-red's the place to be, and this Jace the Mind Sculptor, you could consider it somewhat of a hate draft. It's fine. I'm happy enough here. And right now, the workshop isn't quite getting there, but it easily could. I've got Royal Warden, Coveted Jewel, Talisman. Okay, Recurring Nightmare came back. So I think I will take that now and hope to pick up a few more creatures. I think that's going to be better than taking Pyrite Spellbomb. Okay, now I really hope the Triarch Praetorian comes back here. It would be really nice in this deck. But... I don't know, the blue-black talisman also is, I think, pretty important, so I think that kind of a crapshoot, but also that pack with the Triarch Praetorian has a bunch of cards I'm interested in playing, so let's take the Chandra out for now. Okay, Triarch Praetorian came back. I'm sadly not going to get a last pick Urborg, but I think this is just too too strong for this deck. And now I could Unmark Grave. I could also Scrap Heap Scrounger. It's a card I can discard for value. It works with, well with Recurring Nightmare, just gives me something to recur away. It's a cheap artifact. I can cast off Workshop. Yeah, I guess I kind of like that. I am passing Anton of Vendillion Click, which I guess I don't love, but I have a lot of answers to that. And I think Scrap Heap Scrounder is going to be legit good here. All right, Dark Slick Shores didn't come back. But City of Traders is, is awesome, so I'll just take that. If you build a Mishra's Workshop deck, like a deck where you want to play Mishra's Workshop, you're going to want to play City of Traders as well. Like, it, it's hard to imagine you'll do one and not the other. Could use Dark Ritual... In this deck. Um, what else am I missing? More animates would be nice. It seems like black's open and I'm potentially the only black drafter. So that's a great place to be. Here. I don't know. I guess Sunfall is pretty generically powerful. I don't think it's that likely that Andon's going to use Death Greeter's Champion. Obviously Jetmere's Gardens is always okay, but... I'm not worried about Basalt Monolith combos with Kinnon. I don't think we're that's really on the cards. The Bullis' Citadel is not looking great here. I guess I have Overgrown Tomb. I could have considered Kinnon for that reason. I didn't really want to play Death Greeter's Champion in this deck, I don't think. Here, I'll hate a Scholar. I mean, could have taken Death Greeter Champion, but I don't know. Oh, I think Lingering Souls is a little better than Tarmogoyf and also, I could see uh, discarding Lingering Souls as pretty viable if I have enough discard outlets. All right. Oh, we opened a Troxa and Shieldred. Hmm. There's also Flooded Strand and Preordain and Pyrokinesis, but I don't care too much about those. So what would I rather have? I mean, Shieldred's a lot more castable. They're both pretty strong. I think the tiebreaker is... I don't think Max is going to be able to use Atroxa, and I don't really know if anyone else is going to be. I mean, it's, it's a great card, it really is, but Shieldred's also a great card and only costs four mana, so I think I have to go with Shieldred instead. That one's pretty close, though. Then this pack has <laughs> Palace Dealer and Thalia. Okay, but I don't think Max is playing white. I really hope uh, Mac is. There's also Kappa Cannoneer and Frantic Search and Steam Vents. Frantic Search looks pretty good here. I've got two big ways to animate. I've got some... I do have a lot of discard outlets, though. I guess I already have, like... I have three. Yeah, Frantic Search still looks pretty good. Steam Vents would also be excellent here. Because I'm trying to play a bunch of the other cards. And I think I'll wheel Kappa Cannoneer. And likely try and play it, but... I'm thinking Frantic Search is just likely to be better for me. It's close. Oh, and now there's a Through the Breach, so I kind of wish I took a Troxa for that. Through the Breach Gristlebrand's pretty good. I don't have any other Breach stuff. This is pick three. There's also Retrofitter. There's also Mirror Battle Sphere. Um, I could just take Retrofitter because it's a really strong card. It's good with Recurring Nightmare, too. And then maybe Wheel Battle Sphere. I also don't think anyone else can really use the the breach all that well. I guess I passed Max Atrox a breach, but I, I kind of just don't think that's what's going to be happening. The recurring nightmare for Retrofitter is kind of a nice little touch. Also, Retrofitter is really good at protecting Coveted Jewel. 
And I think I do want to play this jewel stuff. It'd be, it'd be sick if I got like a random late academy, but those those tend to get hate drafted at a little higher rate. All right, guy is cradle though. There's also Emrakul. I could take Emrakul to try to wheel the breach, but I have no other combos with it. There's also Imperial Seal. I'm not loving that. I don't think I'm supposed to take the the cradle. It's good only with retrofitter, and I guess if I resolve Royal Warden. But a red black surveil land seems pretty good. And there's also Chromatic Star. Chromatic Star would also be pretty good in this deck. But I think I got to take the red black surveil land. Let's pick four. What's going to get taken here? Um, I don't know. This pack has a lot of fairly narrow cards. So we'll see where we end up. This is, this is a weird deck for sure. Okay, now there's like a Displacer Kitten and a Corpse Dance in a Time Spiral. Also a Fiend's Tower, but I don't think I'm taking that. Time Spiral is interesting with Shieldred. I don't have great acceleration for it. Infernal Grasp is also always fine. There's Kitten Coveted Jewel, but I'm not going to do that. Corpse Dance for Gristlebrand. And then... I don't think Emrakul or Atrox is coming back, but I think I'd more likely to want Corpse Dance than I am to want Time Spiral. I could also play this Bolus as Citadel, by the way. Let's take the Corpse Dance. We get one more pack here. Well, that's probably just going to be Remand. Remand is just such a sick card. There's also a Jar. A Jar would be nice. Uh, and Leovold and Deep Cavern back, Collector Brutality. There's actually a lot of cards I would like here, but... I think I'm going to take Remand, because I think at this point I'm looking like more of a blue-black deck. And I'll still splash some of the red. All right. Well, Savai Triome came back. That's a tapped red-black land. There's also Gemstone Mine. I don't think I need Pyrokinesis when I have Fire Covenant and Toxic Deluge. I think Savai Triome looks better than Gemstone Mine here. Triomes are pretty strong, even if, the, I guess, the white. Oh, and that lets me maybe play Lingering Souls, because I have so many ways to discard that Lingering Souls... Gets kind of interesting. Okay. And unsurprisingly, Atroxa didn't come back. Kappa Cannoneer did. I mean, I think I'm just going to play this Mishra's Workshop. I don't know. It actually feels like it's going to be fine in this deck. Also, Kappa Cannoneer is kind of a busted card. So I'll take that. I could take Misdirection or one of the green hate or the sideboard cards against uh, Reanimates. One, two, three, four, five. I don't quite have enough blue cards to make Misdirection good enough. I think I'll take the Graveyard Trespasser. Oh, Emrakul came back, and I have the Scorps Dance. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. I guess I, I guess I didn't get the Through the Breach back, but... Okay, we've, <laughs> we've got quite the deck here, but I think I like this. Uh, I might cut Fire Covenant... Because I have the Deluge, but that'll be kind of a question to ask once I see what uh, Mac and Tom are up to. I also like that I have Blood Fountain, Faithless Looting, Dak Faden, Frantic Search. I might even get this Collective Brutality back as pretty low-cost ways to discard with Corpse Dance. Okay, well, I didn't get Frantic Search back or uh, Brutality back. I think that was this pack, but... There's Regisaur and Rafine's Tower, but I think Rafine's Tower looks like it's going to be a lot better. I don't really care for Regisaur that much. I don't care about Displacer Kitten here either. I, I've got, I feel like, enough going on. Okay, and maybe I can cut Virtue and Fire Covenant, and then this gives me 16 land plus Mox. Oh, Brutality and Deep Cavern Bat and Memory Jar came back. Oh, wow. That's tough. I actually, I don't want the Bat. It's do I want Jar? Jar is nice with Workshop and Shieldred, or do I want Brutality? I think I'll take Brutality. It's also really good against blue decks, and I don't have much discard. Oh, I'll probably play Gemstone Mine. Okay. This looks pretty good to me. <laughs> All right, this is a really weird deck. Uh, ended up wanting to cut Fire Covenant, Looting, and Scrounger, because Fire Covenant mostly and Looting because the red sources. I only have four red sources, and I didn't really want to... Put in more. Um, and that's enough to fuel Dak. Also, I guess, Coveted Jewel on time to time. So we've got Recurring Nightmare, Necromancy, Corpse Dance with Grief, Shieldred, Gristlebrand, Emrakul. Okay. But we also have Royal Warden, Coveted Jewel, Kappa Cannoneer, fueled by Workshop. <laughs> we've got some Discard to go along with it. We've got Lingering Souls to flash back. Remand, Collective Brutality, Him is Disruption. 
All right, let's see how this does. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Let's take a look at my teammates' decks. So Tom is on domain with like Neshoba Brawler, Tribal Flames, a bunch of Triumphs over here, and is, has Counterspell, Mana Drain, Fable, Gut, Tribal Flames as kind of splashes, along with Grist and Knight of Autumn and Moloch. But he has a bunch of Triumphs and Fetches. Looks like a pretty good deck. A bunch of Elves, Endurance, Court of uh, Garenbrig, the Gut, Fable, like turn one Elf, turn two Fable is just awesome. And then Mac. Let me find Max deck. Oh, Max deck is nice. Mono white. I knew Mac was playing white. Black Lotus, Swords to Plowshares, Blade Splicer, Flicker Wisp, a bunch of great exile removal, Luminarch Aspirant, Elite Spellbinder, uh, yeah, Thalia. You love to see it, Caracas even. And uh, I had a good feeling about this draft. Let, let's see how this goes. All right, round one against the Smasher. And this is a good hand. I'm definitely going to keep. It's actually kind of tricky. Do I want to play turn one Savai Trium or Island plus Retrofitter? It kind of depends a little on what Smasher plays, though. Not too much. Okay, Elegant Parlor. Basically, do I think on turn two I'm going to be Remanding or Retrofittering? Oh, I guess there's that. Okay, let's just go Swamp. Oop, Sapphire go. Then I can remand and go turn two retrofitter activate if needed. Mm -hmm. Prismatic ending. All right, I will remand that because I want to use my mocks at least once here. Into chromatic star, sure. Draw. I think I'm just going to play Savai Triome here and then pass the turn. So maybe I shouldn't have remanded actually, because that does mean I can't play retrofitter unless I want to get hit by a prismatic ending. Though I do now get to play retrofitter and make a token. I mean, it also maybe I should have just played retrofitter. Urza Saga. Wow. Okay, playing against an academy deck here, I think. So and then here comes prismatic ending to get my mocks. All right, well, that's fine, that's fine. And then now, him to Turok. Um, let's see, Lingering Souls, him to Turok. Let's just go Lingering Souls first. Cause I think that uh, Smasher here is gonna just leave up Saga mana this turn. So I don't actually even need to him this instant. I mean, I'm sure I'll play a land first, but all right. And then I, if I draw a black, I can go him plus flashback the lingering souls. Otherwise, I could play retrofitter and cast him to Turok. Let's see what we draw. Black. All right. Yeah. Let's just start with him to Turok then. Him you. If you want to counter it now, you can't use Urza Saga. And then I got Mountain Lorien revealed. Eh, that's not like super impressive. Then flashback Lingering Souls. And then I can play Royal Warden next turn. And I don't think it's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. I'm just going to attack. I don't think I want to block here. OK, what you got? Looks like a pretty nice little Jeskai deck, though. And then, oh, we're not making another Saga token. Interesting. Okay, this could be something gnarly. Tinker? What are we tinkering for? Is it Triplicate Titan? I guess that would be a bit tough. Could be Mere Battle Sphere as well. The Battle Ball is a little more beatable. Triplicate Titan is going to be hard for me here. What? Oh, Dak Faden. Dak Faden is the card I want to draw. I was thinking, what do I want to draw here? And the answer is Dak Faden. Oh, well, definitely the answer is still Dak Faden. Okay. I have two turns to draw Dak Faden here, assuming the Colossus doesn't uh, doesn't kill me first. Draw. <laughs> A little late there, Grief. Um, I mean, I could pitch cast Grief, but I don't really think that even does anything. This... 
cast grief, oh, sneak and triplicate titan. I guess I'll just take the sneak, play retrofitter, and I think I just attack for four, and then I'll plan on blocking the, the blight steel here, and if that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And I get one turn to draw Dak Faden here, or I perish to uh, <laughs> Blight Steel Colossus. All right, that is fair. Nine poison here. Any Dak Fadens? Any Dak Fadens? Simeon Spirit Guide. Oh, we're just casting Sneak. Sure. Oh, we're just casting Simeon Spirit Guide. Sure. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I can make some tapped warriors, but no, the Colossus got me good here. All right, so going to sideboard here, I don't really want Virtue, so I think I'll put in Fire Covenant, and I think I want one more mountain over that last swamp now that I have the Covenant in. Don't really want Chandra still. I don't think Graveyard Trespasser does too much for me. Playing against a Sneak deck. There's Besaidu off Overgrown Tomb and Gemstone Mine, but... That seems like a little bit dicey. Deluge actually still deals with Colossus pretty nicely. So does Jace. All right, I've got some decent outs here. Let's hope that uh, next game I draw one. All right, on the play, any moxes? Well, no lands. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna keep this hand and I guess put back an island because I think I'm just gonna play turn one mox, retrofit or Rafine's tower. So so do I want my third blue or my third black? I guess I want my third black more. So I will do that. Yeah, let's keep this, put this back. All right, Mox. Retrofitter, Rafine's Tower, and pass. And then no turn one prismatic ending. That is kind of nice. Are we thinking about some Simeon Spirit Guide level plays here? What's going on? Oh, it is. Into a turn one talisman. Okay, but no prismatic ending. Red, 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 red. Dak to steal the talisman would basically have ended the game. Well, that's maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, but it would have been really good. Now, if Smasher tinkers, I still have another turn to draw Dak there. The red for deck, that is. I even put in another red source. Oh my god. If I could have just stolen that talisman. Okay, here's another talisman. Make a servo. Still be looking for that red. Oh, all right. I mean... Jace, nice. Brainstorm. Oh, so let's go island. Necromancy on top. Grief Exiling Fire Covenant. Let's see what you got. What's left in your hand? Mirror Battle Sphere and the One Ring. Okay. Next turn. Doesn't have enough mana to cast Mirror Battle Sphere, right? Four, five, six. So I'm just going to take the One Ring and hope that I can find either find a red source or Smasher doesn't draw a, two, a zero mana artifact. Because, okay, because then I get to Necromancy, the Grief, and that is excellent. Let's draw three cards. Oh, let's put back Savai Trium, Dak, and let's go land. Oh, I could. <laughs> How greedy do I want to be? So I could him first. And if I hit the Battle Sphere, just Necromancy it. That actually sounds pretty good. And if I don't hit the Battle Sphere, I'll grief it. All right, I hit the Battle Sphere. So now I'm just going to take cast Necromancy. I just feel like whatever the last card was, it couldn't, it couldn't have been good enough that I want to grief it instead of Necromancying. All right, that's nice. And they don't even get to see deck, though they know I have deck, you know, from the draft, but. All right, Chromatic Star. Yeah, I mean, you got a Hail Mary here. Hope to draw something. Mm hmm. Hope I'm not going to get like Sneak Titan this turn or something. 
Oh, six mana time spiral. Okay, that's what we drew. Certainly didn't they didn't have it last turn or they would have cast the time spiral last turn. So I don't think the grief play would have helped there. This is a pretty good hand if I if depending on what happens here. Obviously ripping time spiral was pretty sick. Oh, casting iteration after time spiral was a little bit less sick, but I would really love to draw Mish's workshop here cuz then I could slam Jewel plus Cannoneer. I guess any land lets me do that, but I'm probably going to want to uh, use him to Turok this turn. Are we really playing Caves of Chaos Adventure? That's kind of wild to me, but... Okay. Yeah, here we go. Mm. Smash has already played a land, so... Let's just draw... <laughs> the discard to hand size, actually. Grief would be an excellent draw here. If I drew Grief, I would also be in perfect shape. I don't really want to use the Jace as a brainstorm when there's a Caves of Chaos Adventure in play. Though bouncing it's also like a little awkward too. It's kind of an interesting spot. Oh, there's Grief. Okay. So I can like kind of do a ton. So what if I go Grief... I can him first and then grief. I guess I want to bounce the Caves of Chaos Adventure probably. I also want a Frantic Search. Let's start with Frantic Search because I feel like finding more lands would be nice. All right, I'll discard Lingering Souls. The Seachrome Coast really isn't helping me too much, so I think I'm actually just going to discard Seachrome Coast. <laughs> All I drew was uh, <laughs> two cards I didn't want. Um... And then I can go Grief, Pitch Grief, Recurring Nightmare, and him. And if I'm going to do all that, let's bounce the Caves of Chaos Adventure. Oh, I'm going to get a land off of the the initiative as well. Let's start with him to Turok. Got two lands. Grief, Pitching, Triarch, Pra Praetorian. All right, what do you have? Brainstorm. So I'm going to get to take two of these. I don't care about Tidebinder. I guess I want to take Triplicate Titan and Caves of Chaos Adventure. Yeah, I mean, oh, interesting. He's got a lot of mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he doesn't have enough to cast Titan, but he does have Sneak in his deck. I kind of want to take Brainstorm too. Though I guess... I don't care about... And I guess Caves of Chaos Adventure is really not going to get him out of this. So let's do that. Let's attack. I want to cast Kappa Cannoneer still. And I so have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means I want to just pump with one mirror, I think. Alright. Take some damage. What a weird weird and wild turn, but uh, I think that's gonna work out fairly well. Go get my land. I guess I guess I'll actually gotta get a mountain here. And then post combat land recurring nightmare. Um let's cast Kappa Cannoneer first. Cause I want to sack the servo token, I think. Just because the mirror do more damage and get grief back, sacking servo. And grief the triplicate titan because if you cast caves of chaos adventure to go to the forge, I just win so easily. So let's get triplicate titan and avoid any sort of like sneak nonsense. And brainstorm just means Smasher doesn't get access to too many more uh, too many more looks here. Mm -hmm. Whew, okay, that was quite the turn. I got to him grief grief. Play Kappa Cannoneer. Well, it's a pretty good turn. I was able to use my cards fairly effectively. And this leaves Smasher with Caves of Chaos Adventure, Prismatic Ending. I don't care about the lands. And Tishana's Tidebinder. These three plus like a land plus a couple other cards in hand. Okay, Prismatic Ending. The battle ball is dead. Still have pretty easy lethal with uh, Kappa Cannoneer here. 
<laughs> is he gonna tide binder to necromancy? That's not gonna. That's not gonna do the thing you want, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Uh, Battle sphere goes, and then if you want to cast caves of chaos adventure or leave tide binder mana up, fine with all of that. I mean, I guess I'm getting. If you don't cast Caves of Chaos Adventure, I'm getting Forge. So it goes to 11. And then I bounce the Caves of Chaos Adventure and I attack for like 12 or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, we're good here. Okay. Pass. Let's draw. I'll keep. Um, let's go Forge on the Kappa Cannoneer, I think. Because that one's pretty much impossible to block. I have remand up here too. I mean, I think I'm just gonna attack with everything. This is threatening lethal to Shauna's Tidebinder, doesn't really change that. If he's got cryptic command, I'll remand it. And I don't even need to cast Coveted Jewel or anything like that. Or use Jace or Recurring Nightmare or any of those things. I think we've got it pretty well under control here. I can even make Kappa Cannoneer unblockable with Retrofitter Foundry if I need to. Make a servo. Cup of cannoneer can't be blocked. Okay. Let's game two here. Let's get to game three. All right. Do I want another mountain? I have five red sources. Plus maybe jewel. The thing is, if I cast Dak Faden, I'm just going to win the game. Uh, Virtue of Persistence does kill Caves of Chaos Adventure. That is kind of nice. But I don't really see anything I really want to cut for that. And there aren't very many cards he's got that it's good against. So I think, I think I'm good to go here on the draw. Can we get a turn two, Dak Faden? Well, let's do it. Oh, we also know Max has time walk, which I don't love knowing. Uh, I guess I'll have to mulligan this hand. Okay, I will keep... And I think put back Savai Trium. If I can uh, Raucous Theater up a good Corpse Dance target, that would be pretty sweet. No, I'm going to put Delusion in my graveyard, though. All right, if I could draw a good Corpse Dance target, that would be great. Hmm... Do I use Collector Brutality or not? I don't. Uh, I just don't. I don't want to lose to just Tinker here. I don't like this at all. I really don't. Can I hit, please? Mm -hmm. Part of it is I have Coveted Jewel to cast pretty soon here. Though, yikes. I guess I'll take Iteration. I'm not going to win this game. I need to... I don't know. I guess... He's gonna cycle Lori and Revealed, sure. I guess if the if he has if he goes archive go, I go land go. If he plays Teferi and then I play Jewel, that could be something. <laughs> if he hit Blight Steel, that's that's pretty funny. Also, if I Jewel play this turn, oh, I didn't think about that. I played the blue. Huh. I mean, it's not that bad because Tishana's Tidebinder would also stop Royal Warden from. Making artifacts. All right. I hope he. I hope he holds off and doesn't play Teferi. That would be pretty sick, actually. Not gonna happen. Okay. What am I hoping to draw here? I don't even really know. I mean, I could play Coveted Jewel. I'm probably going to, but. So close yet so far, huh? Um, well, let's start by playing Coveted Jewel. I mean, when, when else am I going to do that? Hopefully Max doesn't have anything, or Smasher doesn't have anything. And then I drew Remand. Okay. I could pitch cast Grief here, but I don't think that that's actually good. I think I'll just leave up Remand. And then maybe set up 
some sort of grief corpse dance royal warden deal next turn. I mean, I could pitch. I could have pitched royal warden to cast grief and then corpse danced it, but I don't think that's a. That just doesn't seem like that. That exciting of a play. I feel like I need to get more out of my cards given given where I'm at. I'm, I'm gonna cycle Rafine's Tower end of turn though. That I will do. And next turn I get to cast Grief and cast Royal Warden. I'm one short, unfortunately. If I draw a Mox, I could cast Remand and cast all those. I also have the option, of course, of pitching to cast Grief. I really need to draw another spell or two. I only drew one spell off of the the coveted jewel here, so need to hit a little harder. I mean, I guess if Smash Smasher goes uh, tap out for something and I get to remand it, that would be pretty good. I just don't think that's likely to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to remand this. The One Ring? Yeah. Pretty easy remand, I, I feel like. Oh, Triarch Praetorian as well. Okay. So, gets to untap two lands. Let's see if I can draw. Oh, a Fire Covenant. Okay, that's not nothing. So, what am I doing here? I could pitch cast Grief, and then he cast Tidebinder. I could cast Grief, and he cast Tidebinder. Let's see, if I cast Grief. There's a lot of options here. What am I trying to, to, to do? I mean, I guess if I cast Grief, if I cast Grief by exiling, he then Tide Binders, and then I have enough mana to cast Royal Warden and Corpse Dance and Triarch Praetorian if I pitch the Fire Covenant which I don't know that I'm going to going to do. I could also keep up Fire Covenant, which, I mean, that seems kind of nice. I think I I think I got to start by pitch casting Grief because it's just going to, it's kind of trades for Tidebinder in both ways. And then I can play Royal Warden. I think, I think I actually do Exile Fire Covenant. Mm -hmm. This is, this is tough. All right. Let's see. I mean, I'm assuming this is getting tide bindered. I just don't know how it doesn't. <laughs> Does that? It'd be sick if it if it counted the evoke trigger. <laughs> um, and then now, I could corpse dance it. He's got one card in hand. He's got the ring, or four cards in hand, including the ring. Yeah, that makes me want to Corpse Dance the Grief, I think. And do I want to buy back the Corpse Dance? I kind of don't. I think... I think I would rather... Hold on, hold on. This is a really bad way to tap it. Um, I think I would rather be able to play both my things here. He's got Battlesphere, Prismatic Ending... The One Ring, and Time Spiral. Well, it's going to be an uphill battle one way or another. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Doesn't even have mana to cast Battlesphere, but obviously is close to it. My Fire Covenant. I mean, the One Ring is not... I feel like if I just take the One Ring, he goes Prismatic Ending to Fairy. Oh, he can minus to Fairy and cast Prismatic Ending, because these are tapped artifacts. And then he can take the Coveted Jewel. He can, but he has to balance... But then I'm, in, I'm left with a couple creatures, and I can attack back. I mean, do I take Prismatic Ending? That seems kind of, kind of crazy. I don't think I take Time Spiral. Like, all these cards are pretty threatening. Maybe I just take the One Ring. Oh, uh, no, then if he... Oh, yeah, because then if he... Then he can't cast any two of these. All right. Uh, or I could just take Prismatic Ending, but... I think I'm just going to take the One Ring. Attack to Fairy. Mm. 
attack this for black, tap this, cast Royal Warden. Why do those have to be tapped? <laughs> then cast Triarch. And then Grief goes away. And now, if he draws a land, he can Battle Ball. If he wants to burn his Teferi and his Prismatic Ending, he can take the one ring, the coveted jewel and draw three, but then I get to attack back. Though I guess he gets to coveted jewel and play Battlesphere. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to take Prismatic Ending, but that just seems so weak. I don't know. I feel like I'm unlikely to win regardless, but maybe I should have just done it the other way. Because now he gets the mana, I guess, of jewel. And then he goes Battle Ball, and and now I needed the, uh, oh, he drew Academy? Oh, well, I don't think I'm beating Academy either way. I mean, I guess I could take Prismatic Ending, and then he plays one ring, has Teferi draws, and I'm still, like, down infinite. Yeah. I battled, but uh, that, that Teferi, just the early Teferi was tough. It just got a lot more value overall. I could have kept Fire Covenant instead, though I don't think that's going to end up mattering. Our decks are doing similar things. I have the reanimate stuff, and he has the more of the control stuff, but he has the academy, and I have the workshop. It's usually not a, not a great deal. We'll see uh, how this goes. Mac won his match, and I think Martel's doing well, but let's see. I mean, he can cast <laughs> he can cast Battlesphere and Time Spiral this turn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Third Path Iconoclast, okay. The Talisman. <laughs> uh, and into Battle Ball. All right. I don't really know what I can draw to get out of this. It's not Gemstone Mine. All right, well, a tough round one. Losing to the Blightsteel was really unfortunate. All right, time for round two, and I guess I got a mulligan. I mean, I can, I'm on the draw with the Surveil land, but what am I even trying to do here? Like, I guess this hand's kind of close to casting Kappa Cannoneer. I have three cheap artifacts. Let's see. I draw, play Surveil land, play Retrofit or Blood Fountain. I'm playing against red-black removal. Pretty aggressive red-black. I think I got a mulligan. This hand's... Pretty slow, even even if it works. Um, I guess I don't even know if this is keepable. I am on the draw. I, if I, the problem is I can't even cast lingering souls. I think I'm just gonna mulligan look for something a little better. I guess I'll keep. No, I guess I'll mulligan again. All right, I'll keep. And I mean, this is a turn two Jace. If I. If I draw blue. Oof. I guess, I mean, I'm just, that's just what I'm going to have to try to do. City of Traders into Talisman. Mm -hmm. If I draw, if I draw blue and I can go Jace and then protect it with Toxic Deluge. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's that's no good. I mean, I guess I can maybe get a, a nice uh, deluge off here, but I don't think that's really going to help me. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to hope for a better next game. Death Greeter's Champion. All right, well, now at least I get to pull the trigger on Deluge. I take six here, then I go to 12 after casting Deluge. Land, Swamp. City of Traders just completely screwed me this game. I mean, it's a good card, but it certainly has its limitations. And you certainly don't want to play it as your first land, but I, I mold to four. What am I going to do? I guess if I like. 
Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to draw the raucous theater. I'm going to surveil a gristle brand into my graveyard, and then I'm going to corpse dance it. Yeah, that's it. Bloodthirsty adversary. Recasting burst lightning. So I go to five here. Well, I mean, this deck looks like it's going to have trouble against my bigger things. But obviously, yeah, games where I mold a four aren't, aren't really that going to work out that well. Um, I mean, I, I'm pretty dead. If, that, if I could kill that with brutality, that would be something. If he, Anton's got nothing, I go to two here, and then I draw my gristle brand, and then I go brutality, discard it, duress you, drain you for two, and then next turn, corpse dance it. Easy as pee. Easy as pie. <laughs> Let's see. See what we can do. Arc Trail. All right, well, that'll do it. That was a, li a live look in on me being unhappy. All right. Um, do I want... I want Graveyard Trespasser for sure. Do I want Fire Covenant? I don't really like Fire Covenant on the splash against a deck full of burn. So I think I'm not going to do that. I think the Emrakul stuff is still good. Jace is really not at its best in this matchup. I think I could probably cut the Jace. And it cuts a double black card, or a double blue card, rather. All right. I'm ready to roll. All right. Let's get a keepable hand, shall we? Yeah. No, this definitely qualifies. I'm going to keep. I need to draw a land, but, I mean, this is... A turn three gristle brand against red black so as long as i draw a land and then and I, and I can even miss one land because the sapphire kind of makes up for that so and i'm definitely not playing that against empress shield breaker so as long as i draw a land in the next two draws I, I like this hand a lot okay and on mulligan to six here let's pass the turn land 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 please mm -hmm. city of traders would actually be it would redeem itself here Okay, Dragon's Rage Channelers, fine. Land, 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 land. <laughs> All right, well, it's not the land I wanted, but it does mean that uh, another land will help quite nicely. All right, Umazo is g -tade. That's still fine. Okay. Land, por favor. Let's do it, let's do it. There we go. Land. And I can't play Gristlebrand this turn. But, well, actually I can. Because I can go Frantic Search now. Discard Gristlebrand. And I guess I could discard Royal Warden. Hmm. Or Toxic Deluge. What am I going to do here? Because what I can do is I can untap these three lands. I can cast Coveted Jewel. And I haven't drawn a land yet. So I could Coveted Jewel and Deluge. So I think I'm just going to discard Royal Warden. And I'll put them in this order. Untap these lands. Cast Coveted Jewel. <laughs> Draw three. Oh, there's Grief as well. Grief's definitely interesting. Let's cast a Necromancy on Gristlebrand. And I think he's Fire Blast in the graveyard. I'm going to go to 12 here. Oh, I was hoping to draw something else to cast. Oh, I had played a land, sorry. I was hoping to draw something else in order to cast Grief, but I guess I'll just Grief exiling probably... Recurring Nightmare? I don't think I'm going to need Recurring Nightmare here. Grief you. And Embereth, Shieldbreaker, Fiery Confluence, Snapcaster Mage. I guess I'll just take Fiery Confluence. And I'll play Retrofitter. And I will pass the turn here, discarding Sea Crumb Coast and Swamp. I drew a lot more lands than I was hoping, but I, I feel like I'm doing... 
just fine. You can battle display any of my creek cards. It doesn't matter. All right. Whew, got game two. All right. On game three, it's got a lot of ways to blow up artifacts, but I think I just have to deal with that. And mostly hope that I draw some good black cards and lingering souls. She made a quick, quick swap. Swapped Island for Mountain, put in Faithless Looting, and I just took out Retrofitter against... I feel like against all this artifact removal, Retrofitter is just not going to be that good for me. I'm not going to be able to really rely on it, and I don't really think I want to spend a bunch of resources pumping it into it, and then one Fiery Confluence just blows it all up. Whereas I think Looting just makes it more likely I can just cheese Anton with Gristlebrand or Emrakul, so that's going to be my plan. All right. Let's go opening hand. Yeah, I mean, I've got to keep it. All right, can I get a necromancy? Whew. This looting, I think, is actually looking better here than, uh, than retrofitter, but I don't know. And then, obviously, I would like another black card to pitch, because I don't really want to pitch Toxic Deluge, but we'll see how the game plays out. Deluge is also the kind of card that me means I don't have to pitch something to grief right away. Anton Mold to six here. Maybe, maybe more. What would I want to draw here? Well, Mock Sapphire would obviously be a pretty nice draw, because then I'd have a up a remand. Mold to five, and then play to Dragon's Rage. All right. All right, all right, all right. We, we accept those. Gemstone Mine. Okay, I don't need to play that first, but it's good that I know that I can cast looting when I need to. So, if he plays something here, Roberto, ah, oh, okay. I swear to God, if he hits the mocks here, I'm going to be so mad. Okay, hit Lingering Souls. Sure. Oh, Collective Brutality. It's two cards in hand. I could Brutality kill the robber, duress him. I could also pass and... If he tries to cast Lingering Souls, I remand it. And if he plays another creature, then I Deluge. That sounds fine to me. He gets another robber hit in, but... Oh, Fugitive Codebreaker. Okay, I guess I'll just take five this turn and, and then cast a hit Corpse Dance. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, and then I'll cast my... Oh, there we go. Toxic Deluge X equals 2. Okay, so now I'm not going to grief here. I feel like Collective Brutality answers a lot of the cards that I could be worried about. Obviously, he plays like a Reckless Stormseeker or something. I'll be pretty unhappy. Okay, no plays. Interesting. Oh, let's just hard cast Grief. And then that'll give me the information I need to decide how to play the rest of the game. I'm gonna kill my grief and sure. Um, I accept that. Chaos Defiler and Embereth Shieldbreaker. I don't really care about either of these, so I'm just gonna take the Chaos Defiler. If he wants to play a Shieldbreaker, that's fine. And then I just get to slam Shieldred here. Deluge did the work. Okay, so he's got Embereth. Okay, Rafine's Tower is nice because that now I know I'm going to have an extra mana if I need it. And then my last gemstone mine counter is going to be for that Faithless Looting most likely. All right, feeling pretty good about this one, I would say. Whew. And we got there. One and one with uh, Gristlebrand Misha's Workshop. All right, let's do a live look in on Mac battling Smasher here because... Uh, Mac is going to be on our side, my teammate, of course, and I think he's got a nice little hand. Let's see. Mac is on the play here. And let's see what he's running. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Because I, I, Mac's, got, Mac's got a good one. So, oh, Mac's on the draw. My bad. Okay. So they both mulliganed. But I would say not all mulligans are exactly equal. Here comes Black Lotus. Well, it gets to cast something with it. Oh, it's a Samwise the Stouthearted. No big deal. Let's get the Lotus back. 
let's see what else we've got. Well, a Lotus, of course. And more mana into Smuggler's Copter. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Luminar Aspirant, it's not bad. But surely we're done now. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> and uh, Lotus Samwise is really nice. Samwise becomes like an Elvish Spirit Guide, but it stays in play instead. Let's see. Boom. There goes the, the, the finisher, the finisher, the showstopper, the Thraven Inspector. All right, what a sick turn one. Like, played seven mana worth of cards. That's awesome. And then gets to put a counter on the Samwise. Sure. All right, let's see what Smasher's got. I mean, Smasher does have a Tinker deck. You never want to count those out. Ooh, what are we casting here? Probably a Talisman of some kind, if uh, previous games were any indication. Or, or a Prismatic Ending on the Smuggler's Copter, I suppose, is also pretty decent. Oh, Portable Hole. Yeah, same deal. Could also hit the Luminarch Aspirant, actually. You know, you hit the Smuggler's Copter. Well... I think that's going to be just okay because Mac's going to crack the clue, put a counter on Thraben Inspector. I like Divide and Conquer here. Smash for six. Smasher could tinker away the portable hole now. <laughs> uh, land into Thalia. <laughs> oh man, Thalia is just makes life that much harder. Max got a 3 -0. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be our plan to win this draft. I got my one. If Tom can get his one, Mac can get the rest. Um, Luminarch. Put it on the Thraben. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Tishana's Tidebinder on the Luminarch. That's pretty good. It uh, stops the Luminarch ability, but then you'd still get to smash for five. And if Tidebinder trades off, then Luminarch is back in the mix. But I don't really know how much. You can afford just to take the damage. All right, so Tide Binder blocks Samwise here. And take two more. Thalia still making life a little difficult. Have five points of power on the board, but it's about to be six with the Luminarch. And not sure what the Smasher has to come back from here. Could go land Tinker. Oh, no land. No land is definitely going to make things difficult. Doesn't even have prismatic ending. Okay, Luminarch. I kind of think I would just keep pumping Thraven Inspector. Because at this point, Thalia is already a huge threat, and Luminarch's already a huge threat. So just put counters on the least valuable creature. The Smasher probably just scoops it up here, unless... I can't play the one ring, and uh, that'll do it. All right, I just wanted to show you that game, because that game looked like it was going to be a sweet one. All right, time for round three. Unfortunately, Max Capone here has Soul Ring and Time Walk. It's not going to be easy. Uh, what about this hand? This hand seems okay. I really don't love it, but I feel like this hand has some decent good, like, Decent play. He's got like Leovold, Tireless Tracker. He's just like got a d decent amount of creatures in his deck. So three anti-creature spells, good mana plus an acceleration and a surveil. I think is slightly better than going to six here. So we will see. We will see. Mac is 2-0. Tom's 0-1. I'm 1-1. So we're up uh, three to two. But you know we got a we got some good good matches left here, and uh, it's really anyone's draft. Oh, Gemstone Caverns. And funnily enough, it actually counts as being in his hand <laughs> while it's doing that, or at least the Magic Online displays it. Frantic Search. Um, I think I think I, I don't want Frantic Search. I just, I already have a discard outlet in Collector Brutality. I just don't think casting Frantic Search just and turning a land or two into something else is good. All right, sure. 
I mean, getting turn one thought seized it makes me a lot happier keeping this hand too. Though, him seeing the the deluge is not an ideal scenario. But if I mulliganed and got thought seized, I, I imagine I wouldn't be too happy with that result either. All right, virtue of persistence down. Oh yeah, he does have depth stage oh, and soul ring. What a turn one. <laughs> More? This is all right. Well, guess I'm not winning this game. Turn one thought sees soul ring bank buster off gemstone caverns. Yeah, that's a realistic draw. Uh, I'm not gonna fire off collective brutality. I kind of need that one in order to discard my Gristlebrand or Emrakul if the circumstances conspire to to get me there. You know, time walk now here. Shell duck's pretty good. If I draw one of my big creatures, then I guess I <laughs> have two-thirds of the combo. Uh, what am I hoping for here? I mean, Jace was not the worst draw because I might be able to play that in a turn or two. I mean, I can't play it next turn, but two turns from now. Okay. Dak. No. I guess I will play the Swamp, though, because I'm just going to want to play Jace... And if I draw an island, it'd much better to play that than have gemstone mine in play here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is just an unbelievable start. I'm not going to come close to, to competing with this with any draw I have, basically. I guess if I have one of my, like, turn one workshop... Talisman, turn two city of traders, coveted jewel, grief, you know, sort of things. Like that's one thing. But this situation is no bueno. Alright, so next turn. I can play Jace. It's got Tar Pit plus Mastermind to attack Jace. Hmm. There is something. Alright, let's just go Jace. And see if it resolves. It doesn't even do that much on this board. I think I'm going to brainstorm. He's going to get a card off Fairy Mastermind, but, like, what am I going to do? I need I need to set up, like, an Emrakul attack or something, and I have some of the pieces for that already, so. Okay. Let's go put those back. He draws, and then I'm going to get to Emrakul him. End of turn, he can turn Thespian Stage into something else. I don't think that matters too much. He's getting close to Sheldock, but he's not quite there yet. I don't really see a reason to play Mox here. Next turn, I get to Collective Brutality, discarding Emrakul. And I even have enough mana to Corpse Dance and play Triarch Praetorian. So, I mean, we're not a 0%er here. Obviously, I don't really like my chances. <laughs> Turn Thespian, st Thespian Stage into Gemstone Mine. Uh, how does that work, actually? I think if you turn this into Gemstone Mine, maybe it actually just stays in play as a five-color land. Because it would have no mine encounters, but when you remove a mine encounter... Oh, it... But, it, but it, even in that case, you don't have any mining counters to remove to add mana. So not that he was going to do that. I was just kind of wondering. Uh, I think that turning Thespian Stage into Creeping Tar Pit probably makes the most sense, unless he needs red mana, but he doesn't have red cards in his deck. I'm assuming that's the case. It could have Stage. I mean, Stage Depths, but that doesn't do anything here either. Turning stage into shell duck doesn't do anything because there's nothing under it. I don't know. You can you can do what you will here. At the very least, turning a thespian stage into creeping tar pit seems like it makes sense. And that looks like what might be occurring. I'm kind of interested to see if this Emrakul plan does something. I mean, next turn he's going to want to kill Jace. So he's got to animate a tar pit or a bank buster. I suppose he could just attack with Fairy Mastermind, but not killing Jace seems like a kind of suspect play. And right now, the Emrakul thing would put him to one permanent. If he plays a land, it puts him to two permanents. 
Maybe he keeps, oh, and Bankbuster can also make a token. So he keeps maybe like Soul Ring, Sheldock Isle, Thespian Stage. Or Soul Ring, Creeping Tar Pit, Sheldock Isle maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. It does feel like he's got this crop rotation or something. But yeah, there's the crop rotation. Okay. Crop rotating away Sheldock to Depths. But you can't use it now. That's kind of odd. Huh. Stage depths. So, if I Emer how does Emrakul gonna work? What's he gonna do here? He might stage the depths, and then uh, if he stages the depths, and then he crews the bank buster. Oh, Bob. Okay, I guess you can crew the bank buster off those two. Yeah, I don't think my Jace is surviving, sadly. Okay, three, four. So he's going down to three permanents. Though he needs to sack a land, so it goes down to two permanents. All right, this is going to be at least interesting. Oh, and I get to collect a brutality. How much can I brutality for, though? Because I'm discarding Emrakul. Oh, I'm one short. Well, no, that's not true. I can just minus two, minus two, discard. I don't need to drain. Okay. And then and then I'm going to play a Triarch Praetorian afterwards. Minus two, minus two, discard. I think the discard is good. I don't... Well, is the drain good? No, because he's going to block Emrakul anyway. I think. Hmm. So I kill one of those tokens, and then the stage and the depths go away to make a 2020, and then that leaves one, two, three, four. So it goes to just 2020 in play. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think this is probably better. And then I'll minus two, minus two the fairy. And discard Emrakul. And then cast Corpse Dance. Corpse Dance Emrakul. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I shuffle my graveyard. Cause I, I'm gonna have a flying blocker at the end of this. <laughs> I, I guess I have to make him discard Echo of you. That's funny. All right. I just don't think draining for two did a whole lot. If I could have killed the Bob too, that would have been six. It would have been sick. And it would have been six permanents, actually. All right. Uh, send. So those two go away. He makes a depths token. He sacks everything but the depths token. Blocks the Emrakul. And then I play Triarch Praetorian, and I've got a couple draws to, to see what's up. It's kind of funny. If he didn't have depth stage, this actually, I could have potentially beaten this start. I mean, actually, I haven't lost yet. Annihilator 6. Okay, they're all gone. Doo -doo. Uh, yeah, block. No reason not to. And Emrakul shuffles again. Mox, Triarch, the little Triarch Praetorian that could. <laughs> I've got outs. I reshuffled my Jace. Let's go. Let's go, Jace. <sighs> or, oh, I guess Toxic Deluge doesn't quite do it. Okay. Let's go. Necromancy would also be kind of good. Mmm. I guess I'll unearth this, but I don't really know what outs I have now. <sighs> Damn. Sick game, too. Ugh, so close. Playing against that deck doesn't really make me want Graveyard Trespasser all that much. She's got the Balaged Recovery to get back to his Time Walk, but... 
I like virtue, collective brutality, all that stuff. I'm kind of thinking whether I want Bolus's Citadel as just like I don't know a way to play a bunch of cards. <laughs> like, it's not it's not uh, too complicated. I, I think Deluge might be kind of weak. It can never really kill the 2020 and. I mean, he has, like, Bob. Yeah, he's got some cheap creatures, for sure. But I already have a couple answers to those, including Lingering Souls. And I kind of think going big is, is going to be helpful here. All right, on the play, let's see what we got. I think this is a keepable hand on the play. I would like to draw a land that is not Gemstone Mine. But I have Triarch Praetorian into Dak, discarding Lingering Souls, which is nice. Also, Dak is, is pretty good against him. If I draw Mox Sapphire turn two, we are we are cruising. And yeah, I mean, this is a two lander on the play with a pretty good hand. It's got a two drop, three three drops, and a four drop. And I'm not going to mull this hand, and obviously there's ways it can go wrong. Another gemstone mine, huh? All right, let's play Savai Trium. Gemstone Cavern. Exiling Dark Depths. I guess we're not doing that this game. Oh man, Lingering Souls would have been a sick draw too. That actually would have been would have been awesome. Okay. Let's see what, what we got here. Alright, turn one thought sees. Sure. That's a shame because Dak was looking like it could be pretty good. And now if he takes Dak, it's because Dak would be good. If he doesn't take deck, it just means he's got not very many artifacts in hand. Though deck might still be a, a, a card you could take there anyway. Obviously not going to take my two flashback cards. Probably not going to take Frantic Search. So I really do think it is deck, though some corner cases it could be Jace. All right. Whoa. Takes the Triarch Praetorian. Okay. Well, I'm just going to draw a Mox. Is, is that's, that's my plan. Sapphire. Mm, that's really not a Mox Sapphire. All right, pass the turn. I would have taken another land too. Mm. Why would you take that? Do you care too, that much about me having a two-one flyer? Hmm. Frantic search gemstone mine is not exactly a combo. I will say that. Okay, Balaged to time walk. Sure. My opponent's on the draw has more lands in play than me on turn three or whatever. Leovold. Okay, no, no lands. Sure. Well, I guess I shouldn't. Uh, that Leovold is, is the answer to those to that question, I guess. All right. Let's play. Because uh, I can't cast Frantic Search. Dak Fading doesn't do anything. If I draw a land, I can cast Jace, but that's not really going to do a whole lot either. <laughs> If I draw an animate, I could play Gristlebrand, but Gristlebrand against Leovold is not even a great a great deal for me either. So, yeah, I, I didn't think this matchup was going to be good. Soul Ring, Time Walk, just, I don't know, both games he started with one of those. Game on was pretty sweet, but didn't quite get there. All right. Let's go chase the Mind Sculptor. And I can at least protect it with the Lingering Souls tokens reasonably well. And I'm just going to plus two it on myself. I don't want to target them because they'll draw off Leovold. Obviously, I can't brainstorm here. Bouncing Leovold and giving Max a card doesn't seem very good. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to plus two target myself. Gets it out of the range of Creeping Tar Pit. And then... Oh, well, I mean, if he's got something, then sure. Is attacking good? I guess it's fine. Gonna pump the evolved sleeper here. Take two. No, I don't really think there's a reason not to attack. And then now I'm gonna. I don't even know what I can draw. <laughs> Leovold kind of shuts down my hand. I guess I can flash back lingering souls, and then at least the Leovold can't attack me. Evolved sleeper still gonna keep growing. Creeping tar pit can also start sending in. I really don't want Max to have a black land here because then he can make the sleeper a 2 2 and then, or a 3 3 and then make it a 4 4 and draw a card. And that would be pretty tough. 
-hmm. And well, if I draw Bolus's Citadel and then I draw Mishra's Workshop, or actually Workshop then Citadel, maybe maybe I can I can get something going here. We'll see. All right, Inquisition. Sure, my hand. None of the cards in my hand do anything, so take the deck, I guess. I mean, I guess if I draw Necromancy exactly, I can go like Frantic Search. Oh, I I, I, I would even need excuse me another card in hand because I'd have to discard Gristlebrand into something else. C could also take the deck. That's fine too. Either way. I wonder if, actually, if he takes the deck, I think I'm upkeep going to just frantic search just to discard Gristlebrand, because it's not like it's it's going to do anything in hand anyway. And that way, if I if I rip Recurring Nightmare or uh, Necromancy, I get to put a Gristlebrand into play, and that, that could still win me the game even with Leovold out, just as like a 7-7 seven, seven lifelink flyer. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. All right, frantic search down. I mean, that, that also does make sense. I guess I'll take the upkeep stop off. I take six down to 11. Draw. All right, so now I'm going to go land. Flashback, lingering souls. I'm going to lose my gemstone mine, but I have enough mana to do just about everything. I know it might come back to haunt me, but I think that keeping... Uh, recurring nightmare and necromancy as outs is is worth worth it. It's not like Dax doing anything anyway. Next turn. So if evolve sleeper attacks Dax Faden, I can quad block, and then maybe he pumps it, draws a card, and evolve sleeper dies. If they both attack Dax, well, I'm gonna I would quad block Leobold it. Or maybe triple block Leobold one on Sleeper. I don't know. But obviously taking down Leobold is pretty good. If they both attack Dak, I'm going to triple block Leobold and put one on Evolve Sleeper. I, I, I'm not going to play around a removal spell. Uh, we're casting something great. Probably just using Evolve Sleeper, actually. Okay. Lingering Souls might, might get the job somewhat done. Also, if I draw Corpse Dance... I'm just Corpse Dance and Gristlebrand sending for 11. I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. So do I want to put a Triarch Praetorian into play? I wouldn't I wouldn't draw any cards or lose it or anything like that. I could attack for six, but then I just get attacked back for so much. That doesn't really work. Mm hmm. Is it worth doing that? I don't know. I think I'm just going to deck myself and pay two life to deal two damage. That doesn't really seem like it does, is a good idea. So let's just deck and pass the turn here. Now we start the slow decline where I chump the Evolved Sleeper with one token. And then soon it's going to be no more, uh, not enough tokens to block Leovold, at which point, well, I would say the wheels fall off, but the wheels are not really close to being on right now. <laughs> I can't beat a single card. Gix's command. Okay. Uh, destroy all my creatures. Hit me for nine. And the theater is closed. All right. We are doomed. One and two. Max two and oh. Tom's oh one. Let's see how this draft resolves. <laughs> so I went, I had dinner, I came back, and Martel won. He went one, two. All right, Mac 3-0, me and Martel 1-2. That's a draft. And you know what? This deck was really something. Let's take a look. So it has Gristlebrand, Emrakul, Necromancy, Corpse Dance, Recurring Nightmare, Grief, Collective Brutality, Blood Fountain, Frantic Search. 
that all track seems reasonable Dak Faden as well and then it has like some kind of overlap cards like Triarch Praetorian is good with reanimates good with recurring nightmare on either end it can either enable it or it's something to bring back you know and draw two cards uh Shieldred's good with you know all this that's going on retrofitter can actually feed recurring nightmare and then you have the coveted jewel Kappa Cannoneer Mishra's Workshop with Royal Warden kind of, again, crossing the gap. Was this deck good? I'm not going to say that. I was I was satisfied with my one win. Uh, I think jamming Reanimator and Workshop together was a, a bit of a, a an experiment. Look, I was hurt a little by the fact that they had an Academy deck. In fact, three different people were taking artifacts. Um... Max first picked Soul Ring, then took Reckoner, Bankbuster, and uh, another cheap artifact. So, a uh, currency converter. So, there was a lot of people going for the same stuff, and I guess I probably hurt their decks by taking Retrofitter and Workshop, that sort of thing. But my conclusion is, you could draft Artifacts, you could draft Reanimator, you're probably better off drafting one of the two and not both. Though this deck was really sweet, it was fun to play. And we won the draft, so I'm happy about that. Uh, that'll do it for today. This was uh, quite a wild ride. And you know what? The good news? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I always appreciate you watching these, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow for our next draft. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.